Hi, welcome to the eCam channel. This is John. Today we are going to introduce a common lab scale technique, UVV spectroscopy, for studying charge storage mechanisms and quantifying the change of oxidation state for energy storage materials. Frequently, such mechanistic studies require advanced characterization tools like transmission electron microscopy, synchrotron light sources, and others, which are quite expensive and hard to access. We hope this work will help bridge the gap. Developing new batteries or supercapacitors that can meet various power and energy density requirements is crucial for advancing energy technology. As shown in this Rigoni plot, achieving simultaneously high power and high energy density remains a holy grail for energy storage. In this pursuit, the electrochemical supercapacitor community attempts to increase the energy density by introducing Faradaic processes into the electrostatic double-layer capacitive materials. And the battery community increases the power density of battery materials by reducing the extent of phase transformation. This gives rise to pseudocapacitance and a plethora of energy storage mechanisms in between, forming a continuum. This, however, raises the question, how can researchers effectively distinguish the charge storage mechanisms for a particular electrode electrolyte system? One popular method is cyclic voltammetry, where double-layer features rectangular voltammograms, battery materials show well-defined redox peaks with clear separations, and pseudocapacitive materials possess voltammograms with the cathodic and anodic branches mirroring each other. However, this is not always true. In an earlier episode titled Maxine Shows an Electrochemical Anomaly in Water in Salt Electrolyte, we showed that even though the cyclic voltammograms showed well-separated peaks, the mechanism of TiC2 maxine in saturated lithium chloride electrolyte is actually double layer. To provide additional information, researchers typically use operando or in situ characterization techniques that can distinguish oxidation state changes, such as synchrotron based X ray absorption spectroscopy and the electron energy loss spectroscopy in a transmission electron microscope. As I mentioned in the beginning, they can be hard to access and require high expertise in data collection and analysis. In our recent work, we showed that in-situ UVV spectroscopy could also provide information about oxidation state changes in materials with a desktop UVV spectrometer and a 3 electrode in-situ UVV cell to allow electrochemical characterization with simultaneous recording of UVV absorption spectra. Compared to the explicit in-situ TEM holder that can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, this simple cell made from glass and tape has a negligible cost. The active materials are spray-coated onto the glass, and the electrolyte can be injected into the cavity surrounded by the spacer formed by the tapes. We show that analysis of the UVS data allows one to distinguish intercalation-based battery type, pseudocapacitive, and EDL mechanisms. In this study, we tested pseudocapacitive materials TSVC2 and two battery materials lithium titanate or LTO and Prussian blue to show the wide applicability of the in-situ UVS technique. The X-ray diffraction patterns and the Raman spectra of the materials spray-coated on glass substrate show their correct signatures. The optical micrographs show the morphology of the materials on the glass substrates. It is important to make sure that the in-situ cell offers similar electrochemical characteristics of the materials. Here we show sector voltammograms of TSVC2 maxines in 1 molar lithium sulfate and sulfuric acid electrolytes, and LTO in 1 molar lithium perchlorate in acetyl nitrile, featuring a wide range of sweep rates from 0.5 mV per second to 100 mV per second. The CV signatures are similar to what other literature suggests, including the rectangular shape of maxines in lithium sulfate broad peaks of maxines in sulfuric acid and well-separated peaks of LTO in DCM electrolytes. They correspond to the double-layer, pseudocapacitive, and battery-type mechanisms, respectively. To record UVV spectra at different potentials, we use a stepwise potential holding protocol or multiple potential step coral amperometry MUSCA with 50 mV intervals to control the electrochemistry. This technique not only enabled full-range UVV spectral correction, but also allowed for the reconstruction of voltammograms to reveal more electrochemical features similar to cyclic voltammograms. Two years ago, while we were working on this project, I made a tutorial for it on this channel and I mentioned it would be great for institute techniques. This is a prelude to this institute UVV study now. Here, we show the UV spectra collected at various potentials in the cathodic cycles. TSVC2 in sulfuric acid showed more significant shifts of absorption spectra 
than the lithium sulfate, which makes sense since in acid TSPC2 is pseudocapacitive and in neutral pH electrolytes it uses a double layer mechanism. LTO in the lithium electrolyte showed an abrupt change in absorption spectra, which indicates a phase transformation. Since the difference between each spectrum contains information about a phase transformation and the charge storage kinetics in general, we took the change, or derivative if you will, of the absorbance at specific wavelengths. For TSPC2, we chose the wavelength corresponding to the plasmonic peak, as its absorbance has been found to correlate with the titanium oxidation state change. LTO does not have a signature wavelength in the UVVIS range. We use 650 nanometer as this wavelength corresponds to the most substantial absorbance change during electrochemical cycling. It turns out that if we plot the UVVIS absorbance change or derivative versus potential, the curves show a close resemblance to the reconstructed CVs. We call these voltammograms based on absorbance derivatives UVVIS CVs. Here we show the comparison for all the systems we tested in this paper and found the resemblance universal. In this paper, we use normalized derivative to represent the absorbance derivative as the values are more generic after being normalized against thickness and voltage changes. This resemblance shows how closely in-situ UVVIS can monitor the redox processes in energy storage materials during in-situ experiments. However, these voltammograms have limited resolution because of the 50 mV potential steps. To improve the temporal resolution further, we found that recording single wavelength absorbance allowed us to monitor electrochemical reactions during cyclic voltammetry under operandal conditions, giving better precision of UVV CVs to all electrochemical systems. Since the UVVIS probes the electronic structure of materials, the absorbance derivative is indicative of the extent of Faradaic charge transfer. We can use this information to distinguish charge storage mechanisms and even quantify the electron transfer number. Electrostatic double layer formation can only lead to negligible absorbance derivative. On the other hand, the UVVIS absorbance derivative during an electrochemical reaction that involves Faradaic charge transfer will be appreciable. As most materials go through potential ranges where the double layer mechanism dominates the current, we can take the ratio between the absorbance derivative during the electrochemical reactions of interest and the absorbance derivative of the double layer region to figure out the charge storage mechanism. Take TSVC2 in sulfuric acid, for example. We label the double layer contribution region as pink and the redox contributed region as blue in the electrochemical CV. We can then take the potential range of the double layer contributed region in the electrochemical CV, let's say negative 0.2 to 0 volts in this case, and calculate the average absorbance derivative from the same range in the UVV CV. This gives us 0.58 inverse volt inverse micrometer. We can perform similar calculations for the redox contributed region. The ratio between the UVV absorbance derivative of the redox and the EDL contributions is close to 10 which indicates significant charge transfer contributions. We can apply this method to elucidate a scenario we mentioned earlier for TSCC2 in saturated lithium chloride electrolyte, where peaks are present in electrochemical CVs, yet the mechanism is electrostatic double layer formation. Suppose we didn't know this mechanism. Following the same method, we can calculate the average absorbance derivative of the EDL contributed and the unknown regions. It turns out that they are of the same magnitude, which supports the hypothesis that the unknown electrochemical reaction is based on double layer formation despite showing a peak in the electrochemical CV. We calculated all the absorbance derivative ratios for all the systems tested in this study and found that the double layer mechanisms, pseudocapacitance, and battery type mechanisms show the ratios close to 1, 10, and 50 respectively. Furthermore, by combining Beer Lambert's law and Faraday's laws of electrolysis, we can derive a quantitative correlation between optical information and electrochemical information. This not only reveals the fundamental reason why the absorbance derivative will correlate well with current, but also allows us to calculate the estimated electron transfer number in energy storage materials. Experimentally, it requires us to calculate the extinction coefficients of the materials at their oxidized and reduced states. In the example of TSVC2 in sulfuric acid, we use samples of three different thicknesses. We also use 0 volt as the oxidized state and the negative 0.8 volt as the reduced state. The extinction coefficient is calculated from the slope of the absorbance versus thickness. 
by plugging in all the values in the electron transfer number equation, we can calculate its values to be 0.442 electrons per TSVC2, which is equivalent to 0.147 electrons per titanium atom. This is very close to the 0.134 electrons per titanium atom from previous synchrotron X-ray absorption spectroscopy. We have demonstrated that in-situ UV spectroscopy is a powerful technique for determining charge storage mechanisms and monitoring redox processes in different electrochemical systems. We demonstrate a close correlation between UV absorbance derivative and electrochemical reactions through UV CVs, which then allowed us to distinguish charge storage mechanisms and calculate electron transfer numbers, similar to XAS. Compared to conventional methods, UV spectroscopy is affordable, accessible, fast, and non-destructive. We envision that UVs will play an increasingly important role in in-situ studies of a wide range of electrochemical phenomena in materials ranging from energy storage to SEF formation, electrolyte decomposition, electrocatalysis, electrochromism, and electrochemical modulation of materials properties. Of course, this will not be the end of the development of this technique. Future directions include incorporating simulations to understand the electronic structure change reflected by the UV spectra, exploring UV's reflectance to study electron materials that are too thick for transmission mode study, and more. I hope this video introduces you to a powerful and readily accessible tool that can facilitate your research in the future. We have covered a lot of relevant work in our previous videos that build up to this paper. I will leave the links in the description. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. The videos on our ECAM channel are only for educational purposes and knowledge sharing. Please subscribe, share, and like our videos to support our channel. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.